Daniel from the Prisma team here. In this video, I'll walk through the upgrade process from the experimental version of Prisma Migrate to the new preview version, which we released last week as part of the 2.13 release. The main change in the new version of Prisma Migrate is the use of SQL for migrations, which are editable by you. This means that in order to upgrade, if you have existing migrations that were created with the experimental version of Prisma Migrate, you will have to first delete them, recreate them with the, new ver uh, with the preview version of Migrate, and then apply them. So in this video, I will guide you through this process using the real world grading app, which was published as part of the uh, modern backend series, which you can find on our blog. You can find the links to the repository in the description of the video. So let's get started. The starting point for the upgrade process will be the repository, which I have here cloned. This is the same project that we saw on GitHub. And if I open up here, the package JSON, you'll see that I'm still using the uh, older version of Prisma Migrate. What we're going to do is we're going to actually upgrade this to 2.13.0. And this is the Prisma schema based on which the database schema was created. So the first thing I will do is I will also show the database. Um, so I'm going to just connect to the grading app database. And as you can see here, I have all of the tables. Now, in addition to this database, I've created a second database to simulate a production environment. And that database is called grading app production. And here too, I have the same tables as the ones that I had in the grading app database. And I have this configured in my environment variable file. So right now we're just using the grading app. And as we'll see as part of the workflows, we'll see what is it like and what is different about using Migrate in a production environment compared to a local development environment. So let's get started. Let's get started by creating a branch. So git checkout minus b, upgrade migrate. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the package JSON and update this to 2.13.0. And run npm install. If you're using yarn, um, similarly, you would just run yarn. Great. So now that um, the new version of Prisma is running, and indeed it's 2.13.0, we can start making use of Prisma Migrate. And the first step when we're migrating a project that was using the experimental version of Migrate to the preview new version is deleting the old migrations. This is because the experimental version of Migrate used a, 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 a different format and um, in the new version, migrations are created simply as SQL. So I will go ahead and delete. And before I delete it, I will show what was in it. So we had for each one of these migrations, a folder, and we're going to now remove this. Now, now that we've removed it, that means that there aren't any migrations and uh, we're going to create one now using the MPX migrate dev preview feature. And I'm going to give the first migration that it's going to create, um, I'm going to give it the name init. And what's, what it's asking me to do is it's asking me to reset the database. And the reason that this um, happens is to ensure that the migrations that Prisma Migrate creates can actually execute. This is also why we make a, a clear distinction between using this in development to using this in production. In development, it's okay to sometimes lose your data. Um, and in fact, we might also add at some point some seeding functionality, but this means that it will actually delete the database and recreate it. And so I'm gonna tell it yes. And then besides that, it created this new folder inside the migrations folder for this new init migration with the SQL. And then finally, it actually applied this migration and then regenerated Prisma client. That means that if I look again at the database and I'm just going to connect back to the normal grading app, 
I can look here and we can see that indeed all of the tables were created. However, if we try to select um, data, we'll see that there's not data because the database was reset. The good news is that I have a seed script that I can run. But before I do that, I want to show what the actual migration looks like. So this is what was generated. And as you can see, this is all in a single file. So one thing to note is that when upgrading from the experimental version of migrate to the new preview, um, you will lose the um, full history of your migrations. However, you'll be able to create a new migration, which will essentially truncate all of the previous migrations that you had before. And this is what we see here. We have this one migration that includes all of the SQL statements. In fact, one of the main features of the new preview version of Migrate is that you can actually go ahead and change the types. So for example, you might want to uh, use a var car instead of a, uh, instead of a text field um, for some of the columns. And you can do that here. Um, as long, of course, as they're supported um, by uh, Prisma. And you can look that up inside the connector documentation. So for example, we're using Postgres and here we have these default mappings. So indeed, for example, uh, we had this email field, which was defined in the Prisma schema as a string. And that was by default converted to a text. However, as long as you, if you wanted to use, for example, a var car, as I just showed, um, as long as that is supported, you can use that. Um, you can modify the SQL to use that. Um, and in an upcoming feature that we have um, called native types, you'll actually be able to define that um, in your Prisma schema. So let's get back to it. So I will leave this for now as a text field. Um, because it was working and I'm happy with that as a text field for now. So that was the SQL that was generated. And now we have that inside the repository. So we've removed the old migrations. We have this new migration here and we have also the changes that we made to package JSON. And I will go ahead and add all of these changes. Prisma and use the new migrate. Okay, so that's all good. Now, assuming that we wanted now to apply this migration to a production environment, we'd have to use what we call a baseline, a baselining workflow. And this is what I'm going to show you now. But the main idea with, with the baseline workflow is to tell migrate, hey, look at this database and pretend as if you've applied already this migration. So our production database was created with the experimental and we don't want to reset it. So we're going to take this migration that we created and mark it as applied in the production database. So the first step will be actually to switch uh, in the environment variable to use the production database. And so now that I've switched it, I can actually go npx Prisma migrate, and instead of using the dev command, I will actually use the um, resolve. And I'll just open up the help just so that I can see what some of the um, options are. And so what we want to do here is we want to mark a specific migration as applied. And so we'll use this command and I will pass it. And then I will pass it here the name of the migration that we created. And I can get that by just looking here. So here we have this migration. And then I can take this commented command that I created, mark this. And of course, I need to add the preview feature property. Uh, I'm sorry, attribute. And there we go. So now it's been marked as applied. That means that Prisma migrate, if we use the deploy command, and the deploy command is responsible for applying migrations in production without resetting the database. So what I expect to happen now when I run this command is that it will just tell me all migrations have been applied. 
And indeed, it says one migration found, but there's no pending migrations to apply. So now we've baselined the production environment, and now it's been assumed as um, applied using this resolve command. Now let's look at what it would take in order for us to evolve our schema further. Workflow for up evolving the database schema always starts with the development database. You start by updating your Prisma schema, you create and apply the migration in development, and once you're happy with that, you apply that using the migrate deploy command to production. So to do that, we're gonna start off by going to our environment variable file and switching back to the development database. Once I've done that, I can go back to my Prisma schema and then add a new, a new field here. I'm gonna call this field salutation and I will use a string for it and I will make it optional. I'll also format the Prisma schema. And now once I've done that, I can go open my terminal and in my terminal, first of all, I will also switch here to the development database. And then here I can go npx prisma migrate dev preview feature. And I'm going to use the create only to demonstrate how you can edit the generated SQL. So by using the create only command, prisma migrate will actually create the migration. And I'm going to give this a name add salutation it will create the migration but it will not apply it so now we can go back to our code and then look inside the migration folder and here i have it i have this new migration which has alter table and it adds the column salutation and what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually change text to varkar 30. 30 characters should be enough to cover all the different possible salutations now that I've done that, I can actually go ahead and just use the dev command. And here we go. Prisma migrate, apply the migrations and regenerated Prisma client, which means that I can already use this new column in my um, Prisma client calls. Now that it's been created, let's look at the database schema and then I will look here at the user table and indeed the salutation column was created. That's great. So how would we apply this to production? Well, now that we're happy with it, we might first update the seed script. So I'm gonna open up the seed script and here I have a bunch of calls. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually use a salutation and as you can see, it's already in the auto completion um, let's see if we have any other users that we're creating here. And indeed we do. Um, and and we'll add that. Let's try to run this. Okay, if we look again inside the database, We should see that some of these have the salutation and indeed they do. Okay, that means we're ready to apply this migration now to production. To do that, I'm gonna switch back to the production database. And once I've done that, I'm gonna open up terminal. And then instead of using the dev command, I'm going to use the deploy command. And there we go. Migration has been successfully applied. Let's have a look at the database and look at the user table. And indeed the user table has the salutation column. Summarize what we just did. In order to upgrade from the experimental to, to the preview version of Prisma Migrate, we had to first delete the old migrations. Then we updated the NPM dependency of Prisma. Then we created and applied this new migration with Prisma Migrate Dev. And finally, we tested and verified that the database was cre re recreated successfully. In order to then apply this migration to production without incurring any data loss, we used the baseline workflow in which we used the Prisma Migrate Resolve command to mark the migration that we created as applied. 
That was it for the first part. In the second part, we then continued to evolve the database schema and used custom types. And we did that by first adding a field to the Prisma schema. We then created this migration with the Prisma migrate dev command in the development environment. Finally, we edited the SQL and changed the type from text to varchar and apply the migration again using this dev command. And once it was ready to be applied to production, all we did is we used the deploy command, which ensures that my only migrations that haven't been applied will be applied.